I think Michael is muted. I'm unintentionally muted. I'm waiting for the, the thing to show up. Sorry. What thing isn't showing up? Now it's showing up. Uh, actually, hold on. I think the problem may be that it doesn't show up if uh, if you're not talking or something. So I'm not sure if the uh, if the screen share will work. But I wasn't seeing the screen share at all. Oh. Now I see it. Now I don't. Okay, I'm trying again. How about now? Now I see it. Thank you. It's great. Okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome to uh, Node.js Foundation Enterprise Conversations, first episode. Uh, I'm here with Azat Mardon from Capital One, uh, accomplished author and uh, on Node.js, and as well as uh, amazing you know blogs and stuff about what they're doing there. Uh, hey, Azat. Hello, everyone. <laughs> hey. Uh, all right. So let's just let's jump right into it. Um, why don't you tell us a bit about yourself, uh, your role, your team, kind of what you're doing over there, uh, Capital One with Node.js. So a little bit about myself. I joined Capital One uh, relatively recently, about eight months ago. Before that, I was working at DocuSign, also working uh, with Node.js and JavaScript, rebuilding the, uh, their web app. Uh, you can uh, f find me on uh, my blog, webapplog.com. Also, probably you've uh, read one of my books or at least seen them, Practical Node.js, one of my popular, the most popular books. So uh, what I'm doing at Capital One, that's a great question, actually. Uh, a few of my friends, they were joking, like, hey, you, you joined a bank, right? Because uh, most people, they think about Capital One as a bank and uh, not as a technology company. Which is, uh, I find it quite quite interesting. So we fly under the radar, <laughs> at least for now. Uh, Capital One, and especially this uh, technology fellow program, we uh, we bring innovation. So we have really uh, uh, interesting people in my team, uh, Jim Zaginski and Mitch Pertol. Uh, one founded uh, Apache Foundation, another person uh, created Joomla framework. So I'm just. Uh, honored to be on this team, and my my goal is to bring Node.js and promote Node.js and teaching Node.js courses internally at Capital One, uh, blogging at Capital One blog, and uh, providing uh, kind of architectural advices as well. Wow, that's awesome! Oh, that's awesome. Um, can you tell can you me? Tell me a Ooh, I'm getting a little bit echo. Thanks. <laughs> Oh wait, no, it's not there. Uh, okay, great. Now I can hear. Um, so, could you just tell me a little bit about um, how long you've been using Node and what you've been using Node for uh, over at Capital One, and kind of how it all started? And... Uh, that's the question I'm uh, still trying to find out. A kind of a survey because it's a big company, right? We have uh, over five thousand engineers, and uh, different teams uh, start using Node.js at different. Uh, uh, times. So uh, right now, I think a uh, few of our most uh, uh, popular use cases and examples would be Hygiene, which is an open source uh, dashboard for DevOps. We uh, announced it. Uh, it started in 2013, and we announced it uh, last year at OSCON. And uh, yesterday, I've checked, it has about uh, 900 uh, GitHub stars, so uh, the, I was surprised to, to see that. So that's uh, doing pretty well. So we're using uh, Node.js for the front end and for the build tool for that project. Uh, other use cases uh, for Capital One, mostly we use Node.js for uh, orchestration layer. So we have this massive, uh, we actually have three versions of Enterprise API, uh, and most of it built on uh, Java. So uh, that's how it uh, was initially done back in the days. And uh, to, uh, but it's not convenient to use them on the uh, front end. We are Angular shop mostly. And we have a little bit of React. So for our uh, front-facing uh, single-page applications, we need um, something to massage that data, something to format it, basically to make multiple calls to the different APIs. So that would be the orchestration layer. And Node.js is really great at that. It's, really, it's a brilliant um, technology for, for that piece of stack. 
because it allows us uh, basically to, first of all, to use the same uh, knowledge from the front end to reuse some of the modules, to, re to basically use the same developers. And uh, I think that is the most uh, widespread use case at Capital One in terms of Node.js. So you talked a little bit about how um, it allows much more transferable skill sets between the, the front end and some of the back end team, and, and it allows them to be a little more integrated. Could you talk about you know what the effect that that has had on the company uh, and on the application, being able to have people touching more stuff uh, with the same shared skill set? Yes, absolutely. I'm, I have some anecdotal evidence when I'm working with a team and. Uh, whether it's Java or C Sharp developers, uh, they're doubling a little bit on front ends, so they're not experts. But once the, the, they switch to the stack where Node.js is used in the back end, uh, they have basically, uh, they're more productive, first of all, because they don't have that switch of context. And, um, and then I just, like anecdotally, I see this like pure joy coming to them, basically, joy of development, uh, because uh, it's, uh, it's just a fun little language, JavaScript, that they can use. From the business perspective, uh, as I've mentioned, uh, we can reuse some of the modules, like templates, for example, uh, some of the libraries. So I think that's that's great from both perspectives, from the developers, from the, um, from the managerial perspective. So talk a little bit more about the managerial perspective. I mean, is it just that you, you have less people doing stuff, or is it actually that uh, it's just there's more kind of cross-collaboration going on than there used to be? Uh, yes, I think both. I think actually both. And uh, I've noticed that most of the recent job postings, uh, I'm not just talking about Capital One, but just in San Francisco and uh, the Bay Area in general, uh, tends to be this new position as generalist called full stack or generalist JavaScript developer. So I think going to the future, like the pure backend, it would be uh, less and less in demand, especially in smaller companies. And big companies like Capital One would definitely need uh, pure backend engineers for some of the projects. But now I see this like teams where you have those um, Basically, uh, ninjas, they can do front end, back end, they can do a little bit of DevOps, and uh, the teams become smaller uh, with a smaller team. So instead of seven people, let's say, uh, or even like two teams, one is a pure back end and one is a pure front end, uh, you have maybe a team of five, and they're both doing the back end and front end. Uh, and that removes a lot of overhead. That removes a lot of overhead and communication because now you have uh, fewer people, so you need uh, fewer meetings, and you actually can focus more on the, the work instead of just wasting your time. That's great. That's really great. Um, so when you when you look at kind of where Node is going and, and the future of Node, what makes you the most excited? What are you kind of interested in for future Node stuff? I'm really excited about this, this year, actually. I think this year is uh, when Node.js is going mainstream. Uh, uh, after I went to Node Interactive in December, this great, great conference, by the way, I basically is like seeing all those major companies supporting Node.js. IBM said that um, Node.js and Java, they're two uh, languages for APIs uh, they would be focusing on. So. I see this uh, adoption in the mainstream coming, unlike uh, what we've seen in Ruby. Ruby, I think, at uh, Ruby on Ruby on Rails, it was and still more for like startups, and PHP is more for like startup and small website. Um, none of the big companies uh, would use PHP for APIs, uh, and Java we had for enterprise, and Node.js had these potentials to be both for startups and big companies which I think it's a really unique phenomenon. I, I think it's great. So I'm, I'm excited about Node.js in general. I see more demand for courses, for, for books, for uh, different topics. And um, I think having this huge, huge number of uh, front-end JavaScript developers is just uh, it's a tremendous advantage in Node.js. That's great, yeah. That's what I'm really excited about as well. <laughs> well, I think uh, that's that's all the topics that we had. Uh, I like to have like a little short conversation here. This was really informative, though. I learned a lot about uh, what you're doing over there. So thank you, Azad. Thank you. Awesome. Great.